No nonsense gin drinking. All gin, no nonsense. G'day gin lovers, welcome back. I'm Bobby Freeman and as you can tell by my slightly questionable Australian accent, today is another Australian gin special and today we're going to be featuring this little beauty which is Old Young's 1829 Gin which was sent to me by one of my subscribers and indeed one of my patrons. In fact my very first patron, good old Mr Craig Stowers, so good on you Craig. And speaking of patrons, I think I'll drop the accent for a bit. Speaking of patrons, I have to welcome yet another subscriber to those hallowed ranks. So Mr. Matthew Mason, thank you very much, my friend. You are an official supporter of the show. You have my respect, gratitude. You are a gentleman and I salute you. By the way, I just wanted to say, with regards to comments on the videos, thanks very much for getting involved. I really appreciate it. I love it when everyone gets involved, you know, sort of asking questions, making suggestions. I just wanted to let you know, I am endeavouring to respond to every single comment, even if it's just sometimes like a little love or a, a like on the comment. I do try to respond uh, to every single one. However, there are quite a lot now. I've responded to thousands and thousands, but so ap apologies if I don't get to it, if it gets lost somewhere, but I am trying to respond to every single thing that you guys say, and I'm very grateful for you all to get in, for getting in Involved. So then my friends, no more fanning around, let's get stuck right in and see what they say about it on the website, shall we? And yes, I shall be doing it in the Australian accent, and my old friend, the Australian hat, shall be making yet another tired appearance in the video, because everybody knows this is what Australians wear, all day, every day. 1829 gin, all the way from the Swan Valley. Starting with Tuscan juniper berries, we search near and far for the finest botanicals to give 1829 its balance between bright citrus characters and savoury spice. At 42%, 1829 makes a truly indulgent gin and tonic, as well as a classic martini. Botanicals include Tuscan juniper, cardamom, coriander, angelica, aniseed, licorice, WA citrus, and lemon myrtle. Now, lemon myrtle, I believe, is the key to why these Australian gins are so good. I think, I believe it's native to Australia. I think you can only get it there, but oh my goodness, whatever it is and whatever they're doing with it, it makes gin taste awesome. In fact, the only thing they seem to be missing here, which is in a lot of uh, Australian gins, is the good old wattle seed. Now again, I don't know much about it, but whenever it's in a gin, it tastes absolutely amazing. In fact, Steve the bartender actually sent me a picture of his wattle seeds the other day. And when a man sends another man a picture of his wattle seeds, I can tell you now, it's a very special moment. Right then, on that note, let's crack her open, shall we? So then it does have a cork, and we all know what that means. It is the cork test. The cork test. So then, you know the drill by now. Let's not mess around. We'll go for the squeak. Not really anything. More of a silent hiss, I'd say. A rub at best. Let's go for the full pull. Ooh, not bad at all. A quite pleasing cork sound, as I expected from the Australian gin. So then, let's get her in the old glass. Oh, what a lovely bottle, by the way. I do like that sort of frosted glass. I find it very pleasing and uh, soothing to the touch. Right, nostrils in the glass. Here we go. Oh, man alive. This, oh. I, oh. Once again, the Australian gins have knocked it out of the park with the smell because it's just bursting with kind of all that citrus and sort of... Uh, powerful again it's kind of thick and heady and sort of floral and just sort of seems like everything's just sort of blended together beautifully i always enjoy sniffing the australian gins it's a genuine genuine pleasure but let us not mess around too much my friend let's get a bit of the old tonic in there i think i'll probably try it neat as well just to see how it goes so just a oh i might be but i might have drowned it there but let's give it a go, a go anyway so my friends 19 no 1829 gin from old yang's distillery i say to my friends cheers oh oh man it's a double it's like a double hit oh god man alive heaven above koalas and kangaroos and widgety grubs that my friend ah oh, god is amazing it just gives you this ah oh, everything everything you want in a gin that's pff, blimey it kind of hang on a second <laughs> So you get a tiny sort of a, the buzz of that sort of, um, that the, the alcohol and the spirit gives you. The lovely little tingle on the tongue, as you expect. Nothing particularly out there and weird about the first taste. It's just kind of beautiful, perfect, 
uh, sort of uh, what you'd expect from a gin. Then it kind of, it takes you on a little journey, which all good gins should. It kind of sort of sizzles a little bit on the tongue and just gives those nice sort of crackle of the sort of classic gin flavors. You know, the, obviously the juniper and the cardamom and the angelica and the licorice root. Again, all sort of fairly standard stuff for gin. But then just kind of, I wouldn't even call it an aftertaste. I'd, taste. I'd call it a pre-aftertaste because it happens just as you swallow, literally the second after you swallow, you get this sort of a wham bam of lemoniness, but it's kind of a ooh, it's kind of a sweet lemoniness, kind of an indulgent sort of nice lemon cheesecake kind of lemoniness. And oh man, oh god, I love it. I love it. In fact, I love it so much I've stamped on the floor to illustrate how much I love it. <laughs> It's kind of sort of an indulgent gin that's very easy to drink, very smooth, just rolls down. And it just sort of massages you with sort of little, lovely big lemony hands and says, everything is okay, just keep drinking me, my friend, keep drinking me. There's almost sort of a sort of a, a sherbetty element to it as well. It's all about the lemon in this, I presu which I presume is the lemon myrtle. And it, as I said before, this lemon myrtle, I'm telling you, we need to get some here in the UK because, oh man, we are missing out on this botanical. It, it really sort of brings a gin to life. And it doesn't taste particularly strong because what was it, 42%? What does it say on the bottle? 42 Oh. Well, that's interesting. It actually says 45% on the bottle, but 42% on the website. Maybe they've updated it. I don't know. But let's try a little bit neat, shall we? See how we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that tastes a bit stronger, needless to say. But again, I definitely, definitely say that with, with the tonic is better. I'm not getting, I'm getting more of the buzz, obviously. You're getting, obviously, more of the things like the classic flavors, like the juniper and the cardamom and that, but not massively. You get more of a sort of, obviously, with the burn of the alcohol. But I would say that's way better with the tonic. Oh, man, alive. It just brings, I always, I, I repeat myself on this show, but I don't think anyone really minds. It just brings the gin to life, and it sort of unlocks a lot of those little flavors. I don't know how it does it, you know, I'm not a scientist, I don't make tonic, you know, but it just unlocks those flavors in a beautiful way, particularly with a gin like this. And, oh, God damn, thank you very much to Craig to send in this, because really, oh, what a lucky guy I am, because I think this is probably one of the only bottles in the UK, because I'm pretty sure it's not available here, but that, my friends, is gin excellence. However, my friends, does it have an excellent price, I ask you. I hear you asking me, Freeman, does it have an excellent price? Well, I shall tell you, my friends. It is because traditionally my Aussie um, friends, cousins, brothers and sisters down under do get, um, well, to use a British phrase, ploughed in the ass when, <laughs> when it comes to the price of gin. Because I don't know why, the, but gin seems to be very expensive down under. Now, this one is not too bad. And I'm going to wave a pen to just to illustrate this point. So um, it, in Australian dollars, it's going to cost you 70. 70 Australian dollars. And to get, as I say, I don't think it's available uh, elsewhere. I might be wrong, but I don't think it is. And to give my sort of viewers around the world a bit of an idea, over here in the UK, that equates to £37. Uh, my friends in America, it's $49. And uh, people in uh, the rest of Europe, €41. Euros. And as I say, for the smaller distilleries to support them, I've sort of raised my bracket from £30 to £40. So that comes in three English pounds under my bracket. And my friends, I would pay that every day of the god damn week. Hmm. So my friends, to sum up, a pretty spectacular gin, I have to say. And once again, it is not letting the uh, the Aussie side down because they've raised that bar really, really high. And I always think one day we're gonna get to one, it's just like, yeah, it's not quite as good. But that, my friends, is definitely hitting the mark. One. 100%. And of course, in time honored tradition for the best gins, I say to you people at the, what was it called again? The Old Young's Distillery. Keep up the good work. So if you've enjoyed this video, guys, as always, don't forget, if you haven't already, just to subscribe to my channel, press the little like button, and of course, the little bell icon so you get a notification when my new videos come out. And if you want to support the show like good old Matthew Mason did, oh, I got hit in the eye really badly then, um, please go to my, um, what is it, the uh, Patreon page. And uh, also, if you don't want to do that, you can click on the join button, which is below this here video. But until next time, guys, you know the drill. Take care, stay safe. Thank you to all my patrons and keep drinking the gin. Oh, my hat's in the way. Drinking the gin, there we go.